hey, welcome back to my channel. So today I actually have a writing experiment video for you that was voted on by my patrons over at Patreon. It won by a landslide. So clearly I need to think up some better ideas to make this more competitive each month. But the gist of this is going to be a summer writing routine reset. There are a couple things to note here. One, it is hot as hell in Texas. Summer has arrived. It sucks. <laughs> Basically this means no more midday walks for me and my friend Brooke Passmore has talked about this over on her channel. How she'd been wanting to use voice to text basically in order to like get out and move more as writers were often hunched over and how great would it be if you could be walking, getting some exercise, getting some vitamin D in, and also getting some writing done. So I had been doing that as well and now unfortunately it just cannot happen anymore. It's only gonna get worse. But also something that y'all may have noticed if you've watched any of my recent videos is that the background of those videos have changed a lot. May not be as recognizable to you. Occasionally there are bonus dogs, Buffy and Zelda. The other thing that prompted this as an option is that I recently got my passion planner in the mail. I selected their daily option. And so I figured that before I could really attempt to use this to plan out my days, I need to see what my days even really look like. So the plan is to track each day for a week. There are not any goals here. It's just to get an honest indication of what I'm doing each day and when I'm doing it, if at all possible. And then just see if a pattern emerges and I can sort of create a routine from that. And honestly, I've kind of given up on the idea of a routine. I'm thinking more like a checklist. Things that I need to do each day, it doesn't really matter when, but I need to do each day to help my overarching goals. Because I think the word routine indicates more structure than my life currently has and probably will have for a while. So I need to learn to function and be productive amid the chaos. So I did already start tracking. Today's actually day two of the tracking. Day one, nope, yep. Day one was yesterday. <laughs> Both of these days have been weird because I just got here yesterday so that my parents could leave today. Yesterday I got some work done in the morning and then it was just hanging out with them and watching Hallmark and whatever. And I didn't exercise until 8.30 when it was cool out. Then this morning I worked out early, did a tiny bit of work and then helped my parents get on their way. They finished packing up. Sayonara. <laughs> I also attended Tamara Wood's live stream for about an hour and then worked on the Save the Cat experiment slash vlog slash outline slash yes. And now it is just me and Duke, which actually, let's see if that little pupper wants to come inside now. I have a bribe this time. I hide his medicine and peanut butter. Ta-da! <laughs> now it's on both my hands, I made a mistake. Duke, do you wanna come inside? I got peanut butter. He doesn't wanna come in. Now he's just chilling taunting me. <laughs> oh, see, he's laying down in the street now. I honestly, like this, don't fight too hard because you can tell he's on his last little puppy leg. So if he wants to lay outside in the shade, even though it's a million degrees, that's where he's happiest, <laughs> which is funny. And this is how we know it's a big change because he used to hate going outside if we weren't out there with him. And now he just doesn't want to be inside. Well, that's not what this vlog's about. <laughs> The other thing I love about Passion Planner, this is not sponsored, but I would love if they would partner with me. I have not tried to do anything about that, but anyways, we are going to set our goals for today a little bit belatedly, but again, days are weird now, and this is just for me to see how weird they actually are. So far, pretty freaking weird. So my personal goals, I actually kind of already did. Run, pull up, sort of, with 40 pounds of assistance. I also want to paint my nails, which I should put as my self-maintenance down here. And then for work goals today, I want to finish my Save the Cat vlog, type up my outline notes from that. I need to write my article on running, finish the quick line edit on a personal essay. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to get done today. I guess edit this video up to the point that it's done. Getting real meta here. Okay, so it is actually 2.47 right now, which I don't know why I always try and show that because my phone cannot pick it. <laughs> it doesn't work. And I'm supposed to be meeting my friend at three for a co-working session. So I'm gonna take a quick taco break and then we're gonna get back to work. I bought breakfast tacos today for my parents while they're on the road. And I always buy myself too, because the only thing better than a breakfast taco at breakfast is also having a breakfast taco at lunch. Yas. Awesome. 
countdown to the goodness. Yay. And while I'm waiting. It looks like you were wrong. Community it is. Well, I'm not co-working session with my friend. I do put that it is co-working, but like in quotes because it's mostly chatting. Often chatting about creative stuff, but really the progress made is not substantial. <laughs> no, doing some video editing. Duke and I are chilling. I think I'll probably be out here with him until it gets dark and then I can take him on a walk. The real debate is when I open the wine. So I actually stayed up till 10.30 working that night. My bedtime is usually like 9 p.m. I was finishing up the Save the Cat vlog, which I did manage to accomplish, so I got a little check mark on my planner for that. Also fully finished outlining my Murder Mystery Tennessee project. So I got two extra little bonus check marks on my work thing for typing up my outline in the notes and also for editing this video up to the point that it needed to be edited for the day. I also rated myself at a just happy smiley. With everything added up, though I didn't really get a big start to the day until after my parents left, I did manage to put in about seven hours of work. But I was very excited because I did also manage to paint my nails. All right, so it is, again, why do I bother showing you this? It's 11.49 on Friday and I had an appointment that I had to go to and then I drove into San Antonio. I out here for a little bit and I got a little bit of work done. I need to mark that on my planner, which is in a different room. Oh, were you the one who was knocking? Were you the one who was knocking? Did you? Did you? Well, <laughs> I made a wonderful mistake. And while I'm waiting for my computer to restart, I can mark the work that I have done up until this point, about an extra hour. And then as soon as I'm back home, I will set you in front of my rainbow bookcase and I will talk a little bit about what to share online, how that has evolved over time for me, and basically fully explain why I've had so many different locations going on if you haven't already guessed why. <laughs> I put Duke outside already but we got a package. Yay! Look at this because I am a professional runner now. So cute! And I got my color in a little teal. Oh, I think that. Runner. I got a bit of a pup date. So it is now 4.12. I've been working for most of the time since I got back to my parents' house. Duke has been asleep next to me inside. So I think the key here is I moved the standing desk to my room. And then if I sit in there and work with him, I don't know, I guess he thinks I'm chilling so he can chill or something. My parents never really sit in there or work in there. So I think maybe that's why he's gotten used to just like being outside all day and not wanting to come inside. I don't know. Honestly, he's always been a particular dog. <laughs> like he didn't start eating until I brought out my own snack. So explain it to me, Duke. <laughs> All right, it is just now a little after 7 p.m. I finished the conversation with my friend, so I'm gonna pour myself some wine and it's time for a chat. Duke's inside. <laughs> I choose you. Yay. I told you I was coming back, buddy. Yeah. I'm gonna be with you. So, are you okay, boss? No, he's okay. Let's chat about my uh, new locations, um, the new puppies. And I hope you'll allow me a bit of a preamble because I've been thinking about this a lot, about the differences in my author tube life and my like, I don't even wanna use the term real life because that's the thing. I'm able and free to share different things in different places with different people. And I've been taking advantage of that. So on the one hand, I make vlog style content, which really introduces people to my life, even if that was never initially my intention. There's a lot of things about YouTube that I wish I knew before I started, but that you can't actually understand until you're doing it. So I think even if someone had told me, by the way, making vlog style content will invite people into your personal life more than you'll expect, I wouldn't have had any understanding for that. If I was only making content where I was giving advice or this is like you saw one background all the time, if I only did like this talking head thing, there wouldn't be as many questions about my personal life. But I, I invited that by how much I share. I just didn't know that I was doing that at the time. And at this point, it's the kind of content that I like making the most because I love writing experiments and writing vlogs and all of the fun things. So I continue to do it. And this is just a lesson I've learned in the process, but this is also a lesson I'm learning right now. So one of the things I love most about AuthorTube is that it 
lets me talk to other writers and there's a freedom and expression that I can share with other writers that I can't share with people in my real life a lot of the time who are non-writers. There's no amount of explaining sometimes that allows people to get it. And so it's better. Like I don't tell my real life people about my stories because it's confusing and it's gonna change and they won't necessarily get that but I can tell y'all about that and I can tell the camera about that because right now it's the camera but I'm thinking all y'all that are gonna watch this. And then there's other stuff besides writer stuff that I would have been comfortable sharing on my like platform on YouTube but there are real life people that I know who watch my channel who know me and didn't know certain information so then I got to think about that too in some ways and I don't always want people to find out that way so like I made that seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo vlog where I talked about how I date both men and women and that's something that I think I've like hinted at over the years on this channel but I never outright said it until that vlog because it wasn't until then that I had told all the people I needed to tell that I would have felt bad if they found out via video. <laughs> the flip side to that, however, is that there are things that my real life people know that online people don't know and there's a reason for that. So like an example for this is that since I've introduced Duke to the channel, there's a lot of questions about Duke if he's not in videos and especially now that I've said that Duke is quite old and I've talked about it a lot in this particular vlog too. As you can hear him panting in the background. I have some more of this, the thought of my little pepperoni. Mm. But what that means is that when there aren't vlogs with Duke in them, I do get a question about that. And I know that it's gonna be really hard on me when Duke does pass. He's now silent. Hopefully this is not it's gonna be hard if people don't see that particular video where I mention it to get those comments, you know, and that's a natural thing to happen. You miss videos sometimes. I don't expect people to see every single one of my videos, but I've had Duke in a lot of videos. It's a natural question. I don't blame anyone but myself for that. But that also means that I've been hesitant to talk about the fact that I've been dating someone for several months now. We've survived quarantine and lockdown together and I'm afraid of introducing him to the channel because not that I think we're gonna break up. I really hope we're not gonna break up. <laughs> Things are going really well. I've sort of moved in, so that's why I'm over there a lot. That's why I've been referring to this house as my parents' house. It's weird. Anyways, <laughs> sort of moved in. But it would really suck if I said his name on the channel or I talked about him a lot or I even showed him on the channel and then we did break up and then I got questions about that, which is not what I want. Like talk about salt in the wound if that were to happen. And now I'm having to think of like worst case scenarios and plan out for that kind of thing, which sucks. And so we've been dating for a while and I just have not said anything. And it's gotten to a point where honestly like I mean, I've shown his dogs in the vlog. If you go back, they've been in the vlogs for a while. I kind of hid them for a while, but like at this point, you know, I gave up. It's just figuring out what to do. And up until this point, I decided the best course of action was not to do anything. And I don't think that's fair to him. I don't think it's fair to y'all when like I've gotten so many questions at this point about the new place and the new dog. And it's not really fair to me. I'd like to talk about him. Not about him, but like instead of saying I watched all of Avatar The Last Airbender and binged that while I was doing a puzzle, I can say we watched all of Avatar The Last Airbender, you know? So basically I've had to think all of this over so that I can make ground rules for myself and for my own future mental health, for this channel, for what I share regarding this relationship that involves another person. And I've decided I'm not gonna talk about his name, I'm not gonna talk about really what he does, not gonna talk about, I'm not gonna talk a lot about him, honestly. I'm gonna start saying we when it was a we activity and then after that, like that, that's it, that's it. Mm. This isn't to say that I don't enjoy when other people introduce their significant others. I love that shit. So this isn't a judgment on anyone else. This isn't even a judgment on future me who might change the rules the longer we've been dating. So I hope that answers the question. I hope it also helps to add why I've been more confused about everything because I've been going in between his place, our place, and my parents' place, my place, our place. 
Yes. In some ways though, I should say it's been a benefit because he works a sort of standard nine to five. And that means that like now I have a marker for what nine to five means again and that weekends are a thing because I'm spending them with him. And so I try to get my work done when I'm not with him. Or conversely, when I'm here, I work a shit ton to make up for when I'm not working there. It's a confusing time for me. It's a confusing time in my productivity. Anyways, thanks for listening. I'm going to end this shot with a video of Duke. He's just going to town on his little arm. Hopefully it's okay. Puppy, what are you doing? Nope. No reply. <laughs> all in all, my Friday totaled up to about nine hours of work, including some freelance stuff, and then, of course, filming that last video you just saw. <laughs> On Saturday, though, I only worked for three hours, and mostly the rest of the day involved beer. Good morning. Today is Sunday, but it's actually going to be a little bit more of a work day for me, even though I'm going to have a midday break before I go into San Antonio. So this is going to be an interesting experiment. I'm going to try and document this day in full. We'll see how it goes. It's like 6.30 right now. <laughs> All right, so after working out and taking Duke on a walk, he also had a little accident, so the sheets are hanging. They're gonna get sun-dried. He is chilling outside. Hi, buddy. <laughs> and I am going to get to work. <sighs> it is now 8.45, too, and I do still need food, so I'm gonna start working at nine, actually. I'm back with coffee and waffles, for I am the pinnacle of health. And let's bring you down this way. This is the video that I wanna get up today. So I actually have some really cool stats on how long this took me because I've been tracking this way and I started on the hour so it was easier to keep up with. This will be the second edit and I'm going to try and take notes this time so that I can streamline my process. All right, it is now 10.15, so I will record that for how long it took. File, upload, well, export, but yay. Oh, I always forget this step sometimes. Yay! <laughs> but I am actually going to click into Scribner because I didn't finish that running article yesterday. Yesterday, like two days ago, so now is the time. First though, we need to get some more coffee. Yay. I added, if it will focus, 446 words and it is now 11.06 a.m. And then the only thing I need to go over is kind of typing up the timestamps that I'd figured out. So as this camera battery is blinking at me, I figure that means it is a good time to go shower and charge this sucker. Yay, I'm clean and not gross now. My video did post. I'm in the process of watching through one final time to make sure that it's not like the worst or anything. <laughs> Duke's outside, I'm trying to lure him inside. He's been doing a better job so long as I'm on like my chair because he thinks that means I'll be in here with him and normally it does, but today it means that he needs to be inside so I can leave. Duke, you're yours. Good job. You know I'm so sorry for tricking you. To make up for it, he's gonna get some peanut butter. Oh, yeah. And it is now 11.56, and I think I should be home around five-ish. I will get back to work then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm back home, as you can tell by the panting. Duke's inside. <laughs> oh, good job, Bubs. Good job. Yeah. It is now six o'clock, and I'm going to work on Murder Mystery Tennessee. After reading through Save the Cat and doing the kind of outlining vlog regarding that, my plan is to start a new draft. That was draft two, in quotes. This is the current draft. I'm still gonna do a lot of copy and paste here, but since I had that aha at the beginning for how to loop in the murder and tie it more to my main character earlier on, I just need to rework some things. 
and that's just how it is sometimes. So <laughs> I guess it is time for a new folder and we're going to name this the now draft. <laughs> Yay. And then we're going to drag it all the way up here. Let's do a yellow book. Yay. Well, that didn't last long. I poured myself some wine and I started reading because, well, that's upside down. <laughs> Duke and I actually read outside for a bit. I posted that on Instagram stories. I have some other books I need to read that I, and if I need to read, like I want to read and I'm just so mad because I'm so close to the end of this one and I just want to finish it. I just want to be done. It's weird. I don't know if anyone else has this problem but sometimes books, until I fully dismiss them from my mind, like I've decided to DNF them, it just kind of lingers on my to-do list. So normally reading is like a really fun activity for me, but then other times like this, where I don't wanna DNF it, but also it's been a frustrating read sometimes, it just lingers in like the middle of my brain. And then it randomly comes forward for it's like, you haven't done that thing. Do you remember that you haven't done that thing? Because you haven't done that thing. So I'm gonna do the thing. <laughs> I'm finishing the thing tonight. All right, so this morning I got the car inspected. I made Reese's Pieces pancakes and it is now 8, 16 a.m. It's time to get to work. My plan is to alternate between editing this video and writing. So I'm gonna see if I can keep track of things. Uh, the only thing I need to do today is I need to run by the store and I'm supposed to have a co-working session with a friend. I do need to read over his script still, but that's it. That's it. The rest of the day is gonna be chill. Hopefully a lot of work. to alternate between the two from about 8.15 to 12 p.m. After picking up the ingredients for my peanut butter cheesecake that I'm gonna make tonight, and then chatting with my friend and doing a co-working session that is, once again, more just chatting, a little bit of work at the end. It is now 5 p.m. I actually just finished setting up the live write-in that I'm going to host on Wednesday morning, so I need to fill in. My chat with Logan lasted till 3 to 4.30, and then I'm gonna say 4.30 to 5 is just like Duke and Photoshop, like YouTube setup, but like, I'm not gonna count that as work. I don't know if you guys have noticed. I've been circling my work as I've done it so that I can add it all up later. So if you can see, woohoo, none of that counts as work. And since I still have nine minutes of nonsense, what I'm actually going to do is, I don't have much film capacity left. <laughs> Like, so I'm going to have to delete some stuff. So I gotta download, select and download, and then I just delete in mass. And I'm done. Hooray! Good job, buddy. Good job. All right, so it is now Tuesday evening. It is basically the end of my experiment or part one of the experiment, I should say, because of course, part two is coming up tomorrow. But I do wanna go over the lessons that I've learned here because of all the experiments I've conducted, I think, did I learn the most from this one? I think I'm gonna learn the most from this one. The first thing to say is that I realized I work the best when I have my goals written out and I check through them, which I only did on two days, basically focusing my mind on those particular activities meant I was much more likely to get them done over the course of the day because every time I looked at my planner, it was like an, oh yeah, that's what you wanted to get done today. So it's not to say that I didn't get a lot of work done on the other days. It's just that by the end of the day, I didn't feel quite as accomplished because I wasn't necessarily checking things off and it was harder to look back at the work and be like, what all did I do? You know, does that make sense? And I think really what I'm seeking from all of this is just having a better inventory of my progress. When I had a routine, it was a lot easier to kind of keep up with that because because the work was so regular. There were intervals and if I did the thing, I did the thing. But now it's so crazy that having that checklist is what makes me feel accomplished. And I think it's the closest I can get to any kind of structure. <laughs> the second thing that I learned is that as I went through each day and I added up all the work that I did, I totaled about 45 hours. However, I felt like I worked more than that. And I think the reason for that is that sometimes I wasn't counting work when I was multitasking. So like all the times I was having conversations with my friend when we were co-working, I didn't give myself any credit for that. I think one time I gave myself 30 minutes. That kind of thing happened a lot where I would have a YouTube video on in the background while I was working on Photoshop or designing something. Anything that could be multitasked, 
I would multitask it, but I never ended up counting any of that as work. So what happened is that I'm sitting at the screen for longer because multitasking, of course, makes the project take a little bit longer than it would if I was completely focused on that. And then I'm also not counting it. So then it's like more than 45 hours. So the best way that I could change that is to stop multitasking. It's kind of like, um, you know, the advice to like not watch TV while you're eating, like to be more mindful and know what you're putting in your mouth or whatever. <laughs> I love watching TV while I eat, so I'm gonna continue doing that. But I think that's the kind of like energy I need to bring over here. <laughs> Is that when I'm working, I'm working, and that way I'm not blurring these lines of like work and play, and also so that I'm just not sitting at the computer as much. I found that in quarantine and lockdown, all of the work that I had done to like not be sitting down all the time kind of slowly or quickly went out the window. And again, part of this is now that I can't really do daytime walks, but I could do something, you know? So anyways, I could read. You know what? That's what I should do. I should read. I can be in like different positions and I don't have to be hunched over. Anyways, <laughs> I also want to discuss some things that I sort of relearned. One of which is that I hate doing two videos in a day. So what I noticed was that on the days that I had to film for something else, I just kind of stopped vlogging and or it felt very much like a pain to pick up the camera. I just don't like that feeling. But this is gonna be very helpful when I'm thinking in terms of like long form videos that I do want to create at some point. Just knowing that on the days I need to film anything else, I just gotta skip that day. I need to write a summary of what happened and then like like not vlog it. That's why the Camp NaNoWriMo, the weekly vlogs, or just like this particular experiment, at some point they get to be a little bit tougher than normal vlogs, so duly noted. So this also explains why bulk filming is so hard for me. But if I do need to bulk film, now I can sort of plan accordingly and maybe have more of a structure to my YouTube videos rather than kind of haphazardly picking up the camera, which is what I have defaulted to. <laughs> the second thing is just how long it takes me to make some of these videos. Since I added it all up, I had that sit down video all the notes I took. So to create this video at 25 minutes and 42 seconds total, it took me nearly exactly an hour to film that. I had 51.6 minutes of footage. That's what I put down. So 51.6 minutes, basically half that is the end product. That's what I've noticed as a trend. So that's really cool. But it did take me an hour to like get everything ready and sit down and move stuff and like get the resources and things. Then it took me an hour and a half to do the first round of edits. So because I had 51 minutes of footage, it took basically double that to go through and edit it which is interesting. And then if you keep in mind that the first round of edits, I was at 26 minutes and 53 seconds. And then I ended up at, what did I say? 25 minutes and 42 seconds. So that second round of editing, all the times I do the zooms, I add in anything on the screen and whatever else took me an hour and 15 minutes or so. If it took me an hour to film and basically like, what did I say? Almost three hours to edit it. That's four hours to get a 25 minute video up, which is very good to know. And then we can go back to this multitasking idea. So I was multitasking while I was figuring out where the timestamps needed to be. I was multitasking when I did the Photoshop image. I was multitasking when I was filling in everything else on YouTube and none of that amount of time counted. <laughs> according to me. And if y'all are curious, I don't know how curious you actually are about this. That one did surprisingly well. I did not think that topic was gonna do as well as it did. For the first day, I think because that video was so long, this is not normal, I should say that again, but I got like 40 bucks. It will continue to make money over the lifetime of the video. And again, this did shockingly well. It is the best video of my last 10 videos. And I basically got like $10 an hour for that work. You can kind of extrapolate, you know, when it's not a good video, like cooking with classics videos it takes just as long. I have just as much footage and I might be getting like a dollar an hour for that work. Yeah, so, okay. Tomorrow I'm going to follow my own advice though. I have a new page of my planner. It's gonna be Wednesday and, let me bring you down. The only thing that I know for sure is that I have a live write-in from eight till at least 11. And for my personal goals, I also want to get my run in. I am now on the couch to 10K app, clean the kitchen. And then for my work goals, I need to get everything ready to post my personal essay to Medium, which will be up by the time y'all are watching this video. Might be the day of. Finish my run article and actually finish it. I have some stuff that I need to do on the run that I'm gonna do here so that I can finish that. Edit this vlog with a goal of it being up on Friday. 
1,000 words in Meridian Maps number three. And I would like to get through to the Catalyst rewrite on Murder Mystery Tennessee. So, then there's one other thing I've learned or relearned. I recently watched Marissa Mohi's video on her mid-year audit of her goals, which I'll link down below, I really liked it. But it reminded me how wiped I am after live write-ins. So even though I have all of these as my goal, the writing I'd really like to get done during the live write-in and then I'll just kind of chill and do video editing as the goal for the rest of the day. And then if I have any like mental capacity left at the end of the day, I can return to writing. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for the structure of my day. <laughs> and then of course, I'm going to try and run early in the morning, but I'm not going to fill that out yet until it is time. I'm gonna actually make a box around the live ride and since I know that that's a thing, the question is if it goes longer than the three hours. <laughs> With all that said, I do still have a little bit more work to do tonight, but I will just see y'all all bright and early tomorrow morning. And my run is done. I get a little check mark and I managed to do it the whole way. I'm so happy. Smiley face. There are only three minutes left till the live ride in and I have pulled up four of my Scrivener documents. So I am freaking ready to do this today. Hello everyone. Now it's got the oomph and it's ready. So I'm excited. I will work to actually put that up um, so it'll be out by Friday. We're part of the way through the second sprint. I'm finishing off my last Reese's Pieces pancake and some coffee. I did delete some words in Meridian Maps. So now this has just been kind of slowly going back up. Oh, Ellie spied it. Ellie knows. <laughs> to finish getting my A Thousand Words for Meridian Maps number three. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this. It was awesome. I had so much fun. I'm feeling so invigorated on all the stuff that I got done and that y'all got done. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. I just finished. I do need to clean the kitchen. I think I'd like to stand up for a little bit. So that's what I'm going to go and do. And then I'm going to try and finish this vlog. The only writing thing that's on my list that I did not accomplish yet today was writing through the catalyst of Murder Mystery Tennessee. But I'm I'm feeling so good. I don't know if it's because I got to cross through so many things and that's why I'm feeling positive. I don't feel as drained from the write-ins like I usually do. So I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm feeling great. Holy crap. I'm going to say that the live write-in went a little bit later to 11.15 and it is time to go see if I can freaking clean the kitchen up from my uh, cheesecake creation slash massacre slash it was a monster. It was huge. Y'all will see at some point in the future with the cooking with classics, but oh man, I'm lucky it tasted so good. I don't know if you can see the mess that is in the sink, but that needs to go. So, well, <laughs> it's kind of clean minus the additional dishes once the dishwasher is done. This looks better. That's done. Watching Perpetual Pages video and all of the dishes that were around are no longer around. Hooray, I have done it. <laughs> now the thing that I was using to film on can go back oh, into the darkness. Hey Duke, do you wanna go outside? Do you wanna go outside? Huh? <laughs> and so now I can click off cleaning the kitchen. Okay, so we're back inside Duke's eating, so it was my turn to eat. I do want to point out though that I have every intention to slightly work on this while I'm eating. I know I said I needed to do stuff with intention, and so what I should do is not do that. But the other part of my brain is like, I just want to insert in some stuff from the live video into this video, which I can do while multitask. What? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Jeez. I mean, I'm gonna watch something, but I'm not going to do work. So the financial diet, they have Kimberly from For Harriet on and I love her and I appreciate the financial diet. So, hooray. <laughs> Ow.
and good morning. Yesterday I actually finished Attack on Titan. I do think I'm gonna switch to the anime because it's on Netflix and also someone else wants to borrow this from the library. <laughs> Plus it's pretty action heavy, so I think in a visual format, like a moving visual format, it would be even better. Although obviously this was already super popular, you know, before it got turned into the anime. So anyways, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. <sighs> And I should say it was really nice to end my day with reading. So all in all, yesterday was phenomenal. It was great. I managed to check through every single thing I wanted to do with the exception of getting Murder Mystery Tennessee up through the catalyst. But I'm really proud of all of the rest of that work. And this is the first time I also filled out the rest of the passion planner. I don't know if you could see. I really took that space of infinite possibility to its, uh, to its reaches. <laughs> it's just... I was writing on the sides at some point. It's like, <laughs> so for my self maintenance, I repainted my nails. Um, they're black now. There's this space where you can talk about the best thing that happened, the thing I learned today, and then summarizing my day in one word. And I called it affirming and I was excited. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to, I really do feel like the checklist is the best approach for me to do this. As today has already completely changed, I'm doing something totally different. My workout's different, I'm going into San Antonio. So anyways, I think the checklist is gonna be really helpful. And it was nice to confirm that. And again, I also like all the additional space that the Passion Planner has. The one thing that I haven't used this for is the Game Changer goal yet, which is at the top. And I just need to go through the beginning of my Passion Planner roadmap and determine um, what my you know Game Changer goals are gonna be. And again, I did notice a huge difference when I decided to do the focused work and not allow myself to multitask my work with my playtime. I think that was one of the reasons that when I got to the end where I was like, mm, I don't feel like working rather than like kind of working, kind of doing YouTube stuff, I went outside and read and it was so much better. I felt better at the end of the day. I felt better while I was doing it. And again, I wasn't hunched over. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> please do comment down below. Let me know if you're doing your own kind of summer reset. Let me know how your routine shifts with the seasons. Let me know if coronavirus, um, if your state's opening up, if that's impacted your routine at all. Again, I didn't think it was impacting me that much, but obviously that combined with the splitting my time and places and everything else has really, has taken a toll and I didn't totally realize it until until we got to like kind of a breaking point where I needed to figure something out. <laughs> and also, if you're a planner fan, let me know which you like to use. Yeah. But thank you guys so much for watching and thank you again so much to my patrons for choosing this as my experiment. I appreciate it so much and I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. That was a bad snap. I was, fi I was finishing up that save the cow. I was finishing up that save the clap. And, and then as soon as I'm home, I will take. And then as soon as I'm home, oh my gosh, it's so hard to talk. Where is this fly?